Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! of our national anthem. Everybody give her a round of applause. Eight years old, getting us kicked off tonight for this semi-final matchup here tonight at Mountain Lakes High School where the number one seeded Mountain Lakes Herd hosts the number four seeded We Quake Indians, North One, Group One. Hello everybody, I'm Ryan Sudol alongside Nick Federico. Nick, we had this same matchup live on more Sussex Sports just a few weeks ago. A lot more of a monsoon than it is tonight. There's absolutely. Per absolutely no rain, perfect conditions. Got the monsoon out of the way earlier oh, today. Oh, good, good. Uh, we quake won 22 to eight, mm -hmm. and we're expecting a much closer game here tonight. Yeah, Ryan, I mean, the uh, the playoffs are a completely different monster. We, you know, we've known that, we've seen that before in the past. You know, and Mountain Lakes, you know, again, has we quake at home once again, and we're gonna be looking forward to a good one. And um, right now, the captains, the captains for each team are in the center, getting ready for the coin toss, five, uh, five uh, captains for Mountain Lakes. And Weequake won the toss. They will defer to the second half. So Mountain Lakes will get the ball first. And the last time they got the ball first against Weequake, they fumbled the opening kickoff. The conditions had a lot to do with that. Hopefully they have a better start to this game than they did the last. Can we stand here? Oh, okay. All right. Referees uh, 
meeting in the center. We have a wonderful crew here tonight with us. Cameraman Andrew, producer Tommy, new guy Tommy. He's not a new guy at all. He's been in the business for a long time, bringing years of expertise to the table here. We're glad to have him for this semifinal matchup. North one, group one, the number one, um, number one overall seed uh, in, in, actually, no, the number two overall seed in group one. Mountain Lakes hosting Weequake. Both of these teams run the ball a lot. You're not going to see a lot of passing. Both teams only pass when they really need to. Over 2,300 rushing yards for Mountain Lakes. Not so far behind is Weequake. And both teams, they have incredible depth, Nick. Justin Hernando, as you mentioned, the leading rusher from Mountain Lakes, being in a more limited role tonight due to a nagging injury. So you'll see a lot more names than, um, than normal here. Uh, you will see guys like Ben Busby, Nico Dunn, guys like, like that have been picking up, the, uh, picking up the pieces since his limited role began. He actually did not play last week at all, did Hernando. Hernando with 768 rushing yards on the year, leads the team eight yards a rush. And the guys that will be backing him up include Jimmy Elliott with 255, Ben Busby with 405, and Nico Dunn with 251. As freshman kicker, Ibrahim Cisse will kick this one away. We are underway at Mountain Lakes for the semifinal matchup. They'll get this at the 21-yard line. And that's Cade Shuckman on the short return. And that is where Tim Christ, the quarterback for Mountain Lakes, will start this game for the herd. 33-68 on the year. 49% passing, a passing clip, 662 passing yards, 70, 75 yards a game, but 10 yards per pass. So when he throws it, it matters, and he's great on deep balls. And uh, first down here, someone up here just came in and said, put on the music. I don't know what music they're, I like music too. First down here from the 26-yard line. First play from scrimmage here for the Lakers. This is Kate Shuckman on a jet sweep, a lethal jet sweep. But that time it only goes for just a couple. 90. And, and it came on that jet sweep. 93 yards, the longest touchdown run in New Jersey last week, according to Max Prep. So congratulations to him on that front. Ryan McLaughlin, the wide receiver at the top of your screen, their top guy, 499 receiving yards, 23 yards a catch on the year. Tim Chris looking that way, flushed out of the pocket and is brought down right, right near the line of scrimmage, but there is a flag down on the field. And they're actually going to rule that he was down a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. So that makes it third down and 13. Take a shot here. Cage Shuckman, the lone wide out at the bottom of your screen. Comes across. Chris looking to throw again. And he is swallowed up for the second straight play. The entire defensive front for weak way converges. And Good the job. punt unit coming on. Great job by that weak wake defensive line there. Getting to Tim Chris two times. Three and out here for Mountain Lakes. Let's see what they can do on defense. Try and slow down weak wake because they have all the momentum right now. That, that defensive line for weak wake is lethal. Led by Jordan Augustine, the senior leader of the team. Emotional and stats wise. Strong hands, hard hitting. And he's letting the young line learn from him. And they've learned very, very well as they result in a sack on that last play as a rugby punt from Cade Shuckman. Rolls past the 50-yard line and over towards the 47-yard line. That is where we quick will start their first offensive drive. There are five guys that can reliably run the ball for we quick and the, the uh, most robust of them being Rashawn Marshall, mm -hmm. sophomore running back. Nine yards a rush and had, has had 129 rushing yards and two touchdowns on average over the last three.
three games, and he had 178 mm -hmm. and two touchdowns against Mountain Lakes last time they faced off here just a few weeks ago. Yeah, like you said, Ryan, they have five capable guys running the football, so we could see a lot of names in that backfield for Weequayek as we're going to get started here on offense. Three backs here, and there's Marshall. Runs into the forward wall of Mountain Lakes for a gain of maybe one on the play. And on the tackle there for Mountain Lakes was Peter Brantner, the heart and soul of the team, according to uh, Coach Fusco. Cares so much and just wants to win. And he's a tough guy, too. Has been putting off a knee surgery for the past few weeks. That's how much he wants to bring this team a sectional championship. If they win the sectional championship this year, Mountain Lakes, it'll be their first in seven years. Last one in 2014 in in uh, what uh, in what was then I think just the new Meadowland Stadium against Lincoln in the sectional title game there. Another run up the middle to Marshall, and another scrum results in a minimal gain. Drop that Mountain Lake up the middle run. Third down here for Third down and around six, a long six. The quarterback in this game for Weequake is Zakir Martin. And he has four, uh, five passing touchdowns and four interceptions this year. And he doesn't throw the ball much at all. He actually threw zero passes in their game against Hoboken just a couple weeks ago. And was one for seven, last, uh, one for four, four seven, last week against Woodridge in the quarterfinals. Third down and six, three backs yet again. Man in motion there was Simmons, and this is Akir Martin taking it himself, and he gets creamed right as he was about to turn it into something. Marco Zamba, the linebacker, with the huge hit to stall that drive out. Two straight three and outs for either side. And now the punt team for Weequake is out. And the uh, punt, uh, the, the punter for Weequake is Andre Jenkinson Jr. And it's a muffed snap. Jenkinson Jr. Down in, Week in Weequake territory to start this drive. So Mountain Lakes off of that, off of the blocked punt after Jenkinson took a while to get rid of it. So this is where uh, Weequake started their first drive. Mountain Lakes starts their second drive from this spot. Play action here for Tim Christ. Again flushed out of the pocket and that's the third time he has been sacked in this game in five plays. Few guys in there. Josh. Josh Sanya Olu was one of the weak wake players in there on the stop with forward progress. That's a loss of three. Two wide receivers stacked at the bottom of your screen. And this is a run. And that's going to be a good run uh, for a few yards up to the 40 yard line. That is Jimmy Elliott. One of the, what Coach Fusco says, the four-headed monster rushing attack. Not often you hear that, but that's how much depth this team has in the rushing game. It will be third down and long, though. Third down and seven from near the 40. They will run it. And it's Ben Busby bouncing off of his own lineman. He will be stopped short of the first down, but just two yards short. And it's no man's land. And Fusco is the type of, type of guy to keep his offense out on the field. And it looks like that is what they will be doing. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and about three. One wide out in the game, it's Ryan McLaughlin at the bottom of your screen. Six foot five is what he stands. They give it up and it's a first down. Jimmy Elliott taking it past the 30 up to the 25. Good job by that 
and Ben Busby, the, the runner that had the run to set up the fourth down and short, limped off the field and is currently sitting on the bench. And he just came back to 100% this week. Broke his collarbone in the spring and had leg uh, had a leg injury this season. So we'll follow that development as it continues. This is Jordan Hernando, the little brother of Justin Hernando, taking it for a gain of two to the outside. Jordan Hernando, the sophomore from Mountain Lakes. Good run on the outside there. It seems like that's been the game plan there for Mountain Lakes, Ryan. A lot of runs to the outside, B and C gaps under the tackles, and not much running up the middle. But it's working right now. Just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, the National Football Foundation, the Greater Morris County Chapter of the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame with the generosity of the Atlantic Health System has as its mission to promote the power of amateur football in developing the qualities of leadership, sportsmanship, competitive zeal, and the academic excellence in America's young people. And that run for Mountain Lakes goes for uh, no gain on the play. The foundation honors the top so senior scholar athlete from each team in Warren, Sussex, and Warren counties with a black tie dinner each year. Mountain Lakes, first time he's been in that position so far. 422 to go here in the first quarter. No score still here at Mountain Lakes. Chris looking to throw, looking towards the end zone, and it is a holding on Weequake is what it looks like. Defender was in pursuit of Ryan McLaughlin, and they will give them that call. And the Weequake sideline not happy at all. Could not see the defender that was the culprit, but they are moving forward, and they will spot the ball at the 15-yard line. So huge break there for Mountain Lakes as it, as uh, Chris overthrew McLaughlin on third on fourth down, or third down. Yeah, they took a shot there, Ryan, and that's going to happen sometimes. You got, I mean, McLaughlin had to step on him, had to step on the defensive back, and that's what happens. Two backs here for Mountain Lakes, and that is a great tackle in the backfield there as uh, Simmons on the stop. I believe that was number 10, Nico Dunn on the run there. First time he's run the ball so far. Loss of one on the play. Ball be spotted at the 15 yard line. Tahid Simmons, going to obviously give him credit for that great open field tackle there. Second down and 11 for the herd. Jordan Hernando, Hernando goes in motion. They will give it to him on the sweep. Flag flies in the backfield. Hernando breaks free of a couple tackles, gains about four. Then this one could be coming back, Ryan. This could be a holding yes, it on. Will be. It's a hold on Mountain Lake. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he needed to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him, and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients. The fact with the alternating penalty calls uh, from either side. Second down 11 here, interesting territory here, let's see. Christ, again under pressure, and again he's sacked for the fourth time. Got to give credit to this Weequake defensive line, Ryan. They've done an excellent job getting after Chris. He has no time to throw when he wants. Middle linebacker Quinton Reed in there on the stop. Had ten tackles against Woodridge last time out. And that'll push them back even more. Ball spotted on the 35-yard line. The first down marker is at the five. So this is third down and 30 here. Kevin, uh, Scott McLaughlin Chris, open. Look into the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Ryan McLaughlin. Mountain Lake strikes first. Great pass there by Tim and Chris going right down the field to, to the right side to the far sideline. Had Ryan McLaughlin open by a couple steps. Awesome throw. Touchdown, Mountain Lakes. I think there's a flag on the field. Let's see what it is. Yeah, 
to find the man and not the ball. Talking about it. Referees discussing it. I don't know what the possible call is. But the PAT unit is on the field, and that's about Lake's touchdown confirmed. They strike first. <laughs> Fans are excited here yeah, tonight. Very excited parent knocking on the door of the press box here. Borderline banging on the door as Bradford Goodbar is out to attempt the PAT. He is described as being automatic. Let's see if he can continue his hot streak here to put the herd up 7 0. And he nailed it. 2.30 to go in the no first good. quarter. Oh, wait, he missed it. I thought he made it too, it to be fair. good from here. <laughs> but it goes wide. Six to nothing. Mountain Lakes leads off of the 35-yard touchdown pass from Tim Crest. I said Kevin Crest earlier. That was actually his brother. Great football player in his own right. Currently playing at Hobart. That pass went to Ryan McLaughlin. That is on the year for him. His eighth receiving touchdown. Yeah, Ryan McLaughlin, obviously their number one threat all season long at wide receiver position. He's been awesome all season long. No surprise there, but good arm talent there by Tim Chris really showing it. You know, this Mountain Lakes team runs a heck of a lot. That's what they're accustomed to doing, but Chris showing the arm talent there when they need it most. Ryan McLaughlin, worth noting that he's also a hot lacrosse prospect. When recruiting was open for the class of 2022, his phone started ringing at midnight. Ranked number 42 in the class of 22, committed recently to the University of Pennsylvania. So congratulations to him on that front. Great athlete overall is Ryan McLaughlin. They're going to be kicking this one from the 25-yard line. So it looks as if that Weequake elected to put the penalty on the kickoff instead of the PAT. Interesting. So that is where we have it now. So nice break here for Weequake. Not sure if that was a surprise onside kick, but it's a muff! It's a muff! Could this be the second special teams turnover for Weequake so far tonight? I think Mountain Lakes may have this one. Let's see at the bottom of that pile. Both teams saying they have it. It's going to take an army to pull apart those guys at the bottom of the pile. And it is weak quake ball. What a break for the Indians as Carell White at the bottom of the pile scooped it up. So what turned into disaster turned what, what could have been disaster turned into great field position to start the drive for weak quake. Ball, stopped, ball spotted at the Mountain Lakes 49. See what Weequake can do here after answering. See if they can answer that Mountain Lakes long touchdown. Let's see what they can do. Three wide receivers in the game here for Zakir White. The handoff up the middle is, is uh, number eight for Weequake. That's Sultan Hinton. 65 rush, rush yards against Wood, Woodridge last week. Gets a good start here. About a gain of six or seven on the play. Great atmosphere here at Mountain Lakes. Packed house here on, on the parents and students front. And we want to thank the uh, Mountain Lakes Herd Alumni Club for having us here tonight and making these Mountain Lakes broadcasts possible. Same formation as last time here. And the give up the middle. And uh, actually, no, it's a fake. And, and, uh, and uh, Zakir Martin kept it. No gain on the play. And I just realized I referred to him as Zakir White earlier. My apologies. So third down and... Our receiver set, they hand it off up the middle, and forward progress is going to have a two yard gain. Ball did pop out at the end because of the hard hit, but it will not be enough either way for the first down. And on the run, there was Carell White. 
Give credit to that Mountain Lakes defensive line there. They did a spectacular job thus far on the weak wake run game. I think if you're weak wake, you got to go back to your go back to the huddle on the offensive side and think of something else. Because right now, running right up the middle is not working. Punt unit on. Last time Jenkinson had to punt for weak wake. It took too long for him to get the punt away, and the punt was blocked. See if he can get it away this time with Kate Shuckman back deep to receive. Gets that one away. It's a low roller of a punt. Shuckman picks it up at around his 10-yard line. What a move by him. Has some space down the far side. Still on his feet and finally brought down at around the 28-yard line to a standing ovation from the herd faithful in front of us. Good job by Shuckman. Able to reverse field. CCM, County College of Morris, Athletics are on. CCM Baseball. CCM Volleyball. CCM Basketball. Oh, yeah, it's on. CCM's Women's Soccer. It's on. Nine athletics programs. CCM softball, it's on. CCM golf, it's on. Esports, oh yeah, <laughs> it's on. CCM, County College of Morris, go Titans. You wanna get home, but teams that run the ball a lot, their games are really quick. Absolutely right, Ryan. And that was the case last week with, uh, with Newton as well. Fake the handoff to one guy and hands it off to another. Kind Jimmy of Elliott it outside, there. Jimmy Elliott. A modest gain here, gain of about four or five on the play. Elliott the sweep there from Christ. And the clock stops to end the first quarter. Mountain Lakes leading six to nothing here in this in this semifinal matchup in North Two, Group One. And we will have score updates from the other games going on in the area as soon as we can get them, and they, we will bring them to you. But before we start second quarter action here at Mountain Lakes, we want to give a shout-out to another one of our sponsors that help us bring you these games. The Rogers Foundation, a new nonprofit organization whose mission is giving back to the community through volunteer service and financial support. Go to rogersfoundation.org to learn more. And tune in tonight at 10.30 p.m. to the more Sussex Sports... Incomparable design makes it beautiful. State-of-the-art technology makes it brilliant. The Lexus NX, with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, and Amazon Alexa compatibility, standard. Experience the crossover in its most visionary form. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. That's a surprise right there. Nino and Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Haslam. They were, they had what, 21 nothing. 21 nothing. Um, in the second quarter over Riverdale. We got a score update from there in a, in a moment. Tim Christ here on a second down and six, second play of this drive. And it's a bubble screen out to Ryan McLaughlin, lowers the shoulder, tries to get forward near the first down marker. And it looks like it will be... Just short, but they're actually going to give him a very friendly spot there. I'd say so. They have a first down. As uh, enthusiastically said by the pay announcer up here, Mr. Wiscala. 28 0 Sparta at halftime against that Riverdale. That is right unbelievable. Now. What a start for Sparta. Yes. Looking to go to their first sectional final in six years. Handoff up the middle, great fake there to Nico Dunn. Had the whole defensive line fooled, and that's a first down for Mountain Lakes past midfield. Nico Dunn, six foot 180, goes right up the middle there. Good. Again, you gotta give credit to the blocking here, the offensive line of Mountain Lakes. They've done a spectacular job. personal injury. Contact Joe Filippone at 732-203-0060. Or right out at the top of the screen here. And it's a sweep and a minimal gain there as uh, there was a great open field tackle. Uh, Jordan Hernando on the run there and the stop made uh, by number 33 for Weequayek. And, and uh, he is not on our roster, unfortunately, so. Hey, whatever your name is, that was a great tackle. Great tackle. <laughs> we'll give it to you. Awesome. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 49. Same formation as last play here for the Herd. Play action. 
Chris going deep. McLaughlin again. And there was a lot of hand fighting going on and a flag came in. We'll see who they put the holding penalty to. I feel like that's a good that's a good game plan right right now by Mountain Lakes. Just throw it up there for Ryan McLaughlin, and it looks like the weak wake defensive backs just can't contain him. McLaughlin definitely had a couple steps on him. And that is on Weequake. Heard the fans in front of us saying, holding, holding, holding. And they will give them the automatic first down past the 34-yard line after that penalty downfield. Clock stops at 10.17 left to go here in the first half as the PA announcer gives a great shout-out to the Mountain Lakes cheerleading squad. Uh, braving the elements tonight. Not as cold as last week, though. Definitely no. not. Toss out left. And that's a great run for a first down and out of bounds past the 25. Jimmy Elliott there on that one. Good job by Jimmy Elliott getting the corner there, getting some acceleration up there on the far sideline. I got to tell you, Ron, I did prepare like it was going to be cold tonight. Yeah. I haven't, I, been in Mount, I haven't been here in Mountain Lakes yet, so I didn't know what to expect. So I did bring so hand warmers. I should have brought them last week, but I did not. It's a lot warmer than Newton. Yes. But we had a baseboard heater in the, that is true. In the booth last week. Yes. We don't have that luxury here, but thankfully not as cold as it yes. was. And there's now a penalty called on Weequake. <laughs> Referee made a uh, uh, hand signal that was uh, not a penalty as uh, on second down and short. A great run here for Mountain Lakes. Nico Dunn stays on his feet as he pushed out of bounds past, excuse me, the 20-yard line. And Mountain Lakes, for the first time, is going to run a play in the red zone in this semifinal matchup. So it looks like it's been the mixture of Nico Dunn, Jimmy Elliott, and uh, Jordan Hernando for Mountain Lakes. They're just throwing out guys out there. And whatever they're throwing right now is working. We knew the workload would increase for the backup running backs in this game because of... Justin Hernando's limited role due to his injury, and they've been coming through in spades so far. Speaking of injuries, Ben Busby was injured earlier in the game. He remains on the bench with that leg. Got one-on-one -on -one man coverage on the outside. There's Ryan, there's a Ryan McLaughlin to the top of your screen here. Something to watch. Two backs here for Mountain Lakes, and it's right up the gut. Nico Dunn bouncing off of tacklers up to the 10-yard line near the first down. Could be first down and goal if they give him the spot. Ryan, I think we Quakes a little, you know, a little afraid on the defensive end of the ball. They don't want to let up another big shot, so just gonna, you know, they're loading the box, selling out on the run, but it feels like they can't figure anything out right now. And a timeout called on the field by We Quake, and uh, they have been giving up chunk play after chunk play. Mm -hmm. Looks like they do need that break to talk things over while we wait for that to resume. Make sure you subscribe to the More Sussex Sports YouTube channel. Click the bell so you are alerted every time we go live for one of these wonderful broadcasts of your local high school sports. Also, if you want your game broadcasted live with play-by-play -play commentary and all the fanfare that goes with it, reach out to George at morrissussexsports.com for all the details, and we will reserve you on our calendar. Yeah, we're going to have a lot going on, right? Basketball season coming up. we got a lot of stuff going on here at Morris Sussex Sports as we come to the end of the fall season and enter the winter. Yep. Uh, today is November 12th. Hard to believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, it seems as if the season just started a couple weeks ago. Over two months ago the season started as uh, the music is now p coming from the uh, speakers up here. Much to That's the, a good song. Much to, yeah, very good song. I'm much to it. the delight of the, uh, of the parent that came up here complaining about it earlier and Looks like the cheerleader is also getting down with an Irish yes. jig as well. So, fun times all around here. Maybe we should start doing the Irish jig up here. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe you. You do you. I don't okay. know about me. <laughs> maybe at halftime. We'll see. <laughs> maybe. Halftime entertainment. Split backfield here for Mountain Lakes. And uh, following the pile there was the uh, running back for Mountain Lakes, Nico Dunn, getting a few looks in a row for him, and that'll be a first down past the 10-yard line. First down and goal for the Herd. 9-10 and counting left to go in the first half. I think right now would be an appropriate time to, you know, take a shot of your 
Mountain Lakes right now. You know, the defensive backs for Week Way can't really contain their pass game at the moment. So it's either they cause penalties or they let up, or they let up a big play. So why not take a shot here? Oh, and it's a keeper for Tim Christ up the middle and stays up for a few more past the five yard line. Bit of a surprise run there. A huge lane opened up for him as he started running. Yeah, defensive linemen were, you know, they were kind of spread out a little bit, so Tim Chris took advantage of that. Able to run up the middle for the first sneak of the game, which, you know, I expect to see a little bit more out of Tim Chris to run the football as the game goes on, but a good effort there. Ball spotted at the five yard line. Mountain Lakes trying to go up two scores here, already leading six to nothing. Off of a 35 yard touchdown pass from Tim Chris to Ryan McLaughlin on their second drive of the game and there he is at the top of the screen six foot five 190 is McLaughlin but they're not going to go to him they go to Nico Dunn and he is into the end zone for the Mountain Lakes touchdown good run there by Nico Dunn on the weak side in the a gap weak way just doesn't know what to do on defense right now they don't know whether to load the box or spread themselves out to prepare for the pass good job by Mountain Lakes executing a very good game plan Mountain Lake's going to attempt the PAT. Bradford Goodbar missed the PAT after the touchdown earlier. Trying to right the ship here and have the herd, the herd go up 13 to nothing. Already they have scored more points than they did in their previous game. Eight points against Weequake a couple weeks ago. Now 12. Could be 13. Seems that Mountain Lakes has learned from that last loss to Weequake in a big way. Gillespie the holder, the kick by Goodbar is up and through. That time it's good. And that time we were correct on the prediction that it was good also. Good. <laughs> 13 to nothing, Mountain Lakes leads. 8-18 to go in the half. Mountain Lakes trying to go to their first sectional final since two. There are many names for enthusiasts. But there's only one way to become one. By going all in. The Lexus IS, with a lower center of gravity, a more responsive suspension, and an aggressive wider stance. The Lexus IS is all in on the sports sedan. <laughs> Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. To start off his stint. Yeah. Started coaching at uh, Newark West Side in the late 90s and while he was coaching at Westside he was continuing his duties as a Newark police officer so we obviously thank him yes. for uh, for his service in that front but thanks to Tim for being of great service to these kids at the same time it's hard, it's hard to juggle two things at once let alone being a police officer and a football coach 100 percent that kick by B good bar picks and That's it's great. picked up at around the 25 yard line and they had that one snuffed out very very well as the return by Raheem Smith Marset is stopped almost immediately. And you'll recognize that last name if you're a really big fan of the NFL, specifically of the Minnesota Vikings, because his brother, rookie wide receiver Emir Smith Marset, graduated from Iowa, drafted out of the fifth round by the Minnesota Vikings. So it runs in the family, and he actually had a first-team all-conference honors last year as a sophomore, did Marset, as wow. a defensive back. So again, an example of football being in the blood. Also, uh, one of the more famous graduates of Weekman was a sack machine in the late 70s. Bubba Baker mm. went to uh, Weekwake, famous uh, Detroit Lion. Currently living in Cleveland, running a restaurant. I don't know if he's watching, but we hope that's going well. <laughs> First play of this drive here is a draw play. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers oh, here. Man. Oh, a great stiff arm there by, uh, by Rashad Marshall. I don't know how he is staying on his feet, but he gets eight yards out of it. What a run there by Rashad Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Great, yeah great run there. Being able to, you, know, you could argue that he had a little face mask there. He got a little bit, you know, Mountain Lakes had a little bit of the face mask there. But nonetheless, a great run there by Marshall. I said Marshall first. I wanted to give him the French flair. <laughs> it just made me laugh. I don't really know why. But it just <laughs> Three wide receivers here for Wee Quake. Shotgun for Zakir Martin. And after faking the handoff, he'll keep it himself. Runs into the forward wall. And it looks like that will, we, will be enough for the first down for the Indians past the 40-yard line. Yeah, Wee Quake just has to put some plays together. Whether I know it doesn't seem like they're going to throw the ball a heck of a lot tonight, but... If they do find themselves down more multiple possessions, then they might have to. 
But right now their game plan is to keep stuffing the ball up the middle and see what, see what happens from there. So first successful move in the chains for them. First down and 10 from the Mountain Lakes, or from the Weequig 42, I should say. And it's a draw play. Look at this run right up the middle of the field. Correll White into Mountain Lakes territory and near the 35-yard line. What speed on display there from White. Again, they continue to go up the middle of the field here, up the A-gaps there, and they finally get a break there. Huge drive. This is shaping up to be for the Indians as they're down 13 to nothing, under seven and a half minutes to go in the half. Trying to get back into this game. Martin in the shotgun again. And it's another draw, this time to Marshall. Marshall will get four or five on the play. So Quake having getting a little bit of momentum here. Be second down and six. Zakir faked the handoff there on the sweep under pressure, gets out of trouble, and he will gain maybe a yard on the play. But the Mountain Lakes defensive front doing what Weequake did early on to, to, to Tim Chris, and that was getting to him. They did there, and uh, they took that play out of the equation. Yeah, you gotta watch out. You know, Martin is a very shifty running back. We've seen it so far. We've seen it early on, and he's definitely a threat to run the football. But good job by the Mountain Lake secondary to keep the guy keep the guys uh, on open. Trips at the top of the screen for Martin. Third down and six from the 35. And they're going to hand it off to Marshall on another draw, and it goes for only two. But just like Mountain Lakes was earlier, Weequake is in no man's land. And according for, according to the uh, offensive coordinator sitting next to us, we're going for that word I can't say on air. <laughs> and it looks like they are keeping the offense out on the field. Secure Martin and company trying to draw up a play that will get him a first down. What a huge play this would be for this Mountain Lakes defense to stall a drive out that was looking very, very good. And uh, as the command from the PA announcer goes, they have more cowbell. Zakir Martin looking to throw. He has his man, and it is Marshall on the far side. First down for Weequake. First pass of the night there for for Zakir Martin there, first down, we quag. Now they're gonna start getting something going. And I apologize, that was a Keith Jenkins there on the grab. He's made a lot of big big catches this year, as, uh, including a 33-yard go-ahead game-winning touchdown against Summit just a couple weeks ago. Direct snap here to Zakir Martin. Tr trying to weave his way through the tacklers, and he gains around five. And that was Ryan McLaughlin in there on the tackle. a big offensive drive here for the Weequake Indians. A score here would do them wonders. Even if you get, even if you result and get three, anything would be good here. Elijah Motley is the deep man at the bottom of your screen. They don't go to anyone. They actually go to Rashawn Marshall. Marshall. Marshall, what a great run up the middle. He's going to the end zone. Touchdown, Weequake. Good run right up the middle there by Rashawn Marshall. Able, I'm on, on that drive, we quake, able to break free for a couple of good runs there and results in, result in a score. We have a game here. 13 to 6 with 4.12 to go in the first half. PAT unit coming on here for We Quake. Ibrahim Cisse is the kicker, freshman kicker for We Quake. Was 4 for 4 on PATs against Woodridge last week. And the kick is blocked. Can't make a play out of it, but they prevent Weequake from going down by six. They are now down seven. Man, they are blocking kicks left and right. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, 
Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. They've, they've, they've cost Weequayek twice in this game now. And that was actually a huge point of contention in last week's game against Woodridge. They had a 45-yard punt return t- touchdown call back because of holding. And Coach Brian Logan said we can't have penalties like that. Penalties like the holding penalty on the punt return in the next rounds are a no-no. They already got two of them tonight, and that first half isn't even over. Yeah. Cissé getting ready to boot this one away. Fernando and Elliott back deep to receive for Mountain Lakes. And this is a great kick, high in the air, received at around the 20-yard line here. This is K- this Cade Shuckman, and he takes it up to the 35-yard line. So good return there for Shuckman. And with 4.06 to go here in the half, wouldn't be surprised if this was Mountain Lakes' last drive of the half, or the last drive of the half for either team because of how they run the clock down. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Cade Shuckman in the offensive game plan right now, but right now you don't need to. Like I said, Nico Dunn has been great. Tim Chris has been commanding this game very well. Ben Busby, you know, injured earlier in the game, but Jimmy Elliott and um, Jordan Hernando have been picking up, picking it up for Mountain Lakes. This drive will start on the 36-yard line. Two backs with the lone wideout. Guess who? McLaughlin at the top of the screen. Chris tosses this one out left. It's Nico Dunn. And a great open field tackle. I'm sorry, that was actually uh, Elliott on the tack- uh, on the on the run there. And a uh, loss of one on the play on the stop there was Zakir Martin. Also lines up at uh, middle linebacker as well as being the quarterback for the Indians. 345 and counting left to go here in the half. But the deep ball is something that Coach Fusco made a point of in our conversation earlier this week. When they have a, 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 a down and long situation, Tim Chris can throw it up there like nobody's business. He will throw it actually to the side here, and a screen to Cade Shuckman gets back to the original line of scrimmage, plus a couple actually. It's going to be third down and eight from the 38 yard line. This is a big third down here for Mountain Lakes. You don't want to give the ball back to Weequake. They're surging on offense right now. And there's still a lot of time. There's three minutes to go in the first half. There's still time for Weequake to put more points on the board and make it the ball back. Two wideouts in the game here for Mountain Lakes. Christ looking to throw. Over the middle, short throw. He has his man! Oh, it's still on his feet. What a run by Gavin Ananian. Gavin Ananian up past the 30-yard line. The tight end going to Lafayette for lacrosse. He might want to switch sports. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Biggest play of the game so far for the Lakers. We're having a little technical difficulties here. Uh, I'm back. Nick is back. Yes, I'm he back. Is. I'm here. I didn't leave. I didn't go get a snack at the snack at the snack stand, but I will soon. <laughs> Players shaking up on the on the play there for Week Quake. That was Elijah Motley. He has been uh, being taken off the field, thankfully, on his own power. But what a catch and run in space by Gavin Ananian and Mountain Lakes now with a first down near the 30-yard line of Week Quake. This one goes right up the gut, and Nico Dunn has the edge, and a flag comes in, and that is going to be. On Mountain Lakes, it'll come back. Yep, that's going to be a little a legal block in the back. You saw it. I believe that's on number eight. That's on Ryan yeah, McLaughlin. Ryan saw that from a mile away there on the far sideline. This one's going to be coming back. And he tried sure. to save it. Tried to put his hands up, doing that. It wasn't me, but I'm sorry, son, but it was you. It was.
were able to get in the backfield there. But ever since then, ever since Mountain Lake started putting points up, they've kind of... Tim Chris looking to throw, and it's an Annie, and oh, it was intended for an Annie, but it goes through his hands, and it also went through the hands of Isim Smith Marset, almost had the pick. It'll be second down and 10 from the 29, and they actually moved it back to the original line of scrimmage, so the, uh, the block in the back play, to pretend that never happened. Yeah, that would have been a golden opportunity there for Wee Quake to get a turnover here and get some maybe some more points before halftime, but luckily for Mountain Lakes, that did not happen. And he had an interception against Mountain Lakes in the last game they played against each other two weeks ago. Second down and 10 for the 29. Great run here, staying on his feet. And past the 20 yard line for a first down. I believe that's Nico, Nico Dunn. Dunn again. Yeah, he's been great all night. He's been their guy to go right up the middle there for Mountain Lakes. Seems like Nico Dunn has had the opportunity to go on the on the inside of the offensive line, and then they've had guys like Hernando and Jimmy Elliott going on the outside. Cage Shuckman checks out of the game, and in comes Jordan Hernando, the little brother of Justin Hernando. We haven't seen his number called so far tonight. Jordan Hernando, the uh, sophomore. And they hand it to Jimmy Elliott. Tried to cut it upfield, but a great hit on the on the play. Another flag down on the field. We'll see what this is. That was Quentin Reed on the hit, but we'll see what this flag is. It's gonna be holding on Mountain Lakes. This one's gonna be coming back again. Not good for Mountain Lakes to end the half. To, you know, as we come to the end of the half here, two consecutive bad penalties you don't want to take. That's gonna take momentum right away from the Lakers. And we were just discussing how Weequake had some costly penalties, two costly penalties on this drive on both big plays for Mountain Lakes. Yeah, absolutely. So with that holding call, we'll move them back 10 yards. A minute and 20 and counting left to go here in the first half. Mountain Lakes trying to go up three possessions over Weequake before they head in. Looking to throw and it is, oh he caught it! How in the world did Cade Shuckman catch that ball? It was tipped by the defender and fantastic instincts by Shuckman to reel it in. Great hand-eye coordination right there by Cade Shuckman. And a timeout called by Mountain Lakes. A breathtaking play. They had to catch their breath. It was about to be picked off, but the but the but the defender who I believe I believe that was a Seam Smith Marset mm -hmm. almost had another interception chance. Bobbled that one, and Cade Shuckman with fantastic instincts reels that one in. That ball will be spotted at the 14-yard line. It will be second down and 10 when the timeout times back in. The crowd didn't even know how to react. Yeah, they didn't <laughs> like, know what to do. I, seriously, they, 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 they didn't realize he caught the ball, and then when the referee made the signal for catch, they were like, oh, oh, all right. <laughs> the emotions of high school playoff football. I'll tell you. Sometimes you don't know what to think. Second down and 10 for Kristen Company. Christ, the give to Nico Dunn. Dunn busts through, and he stays on his feet down inside the five. Nico Dunn has been awesome all night long up the middle. He's been their one weapon that's been really, really consistent here tonight, taking over really for Ben Busby and, and Justin Hernando. He's done a fantastic job tonight. No huddle offense here. 40 seconds and counting to go here in the first half. They give us to Dunn again, trying to get to the goal line, and he is in for the touchdown. His second tonight, and the herd goes up 19 to six. Again, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Nico Dunn up the middle, it's been the story all night long, and Weequake just doesn't have an answer for it on, on defense. Weequake will get the ball back to start the second half. So a key score there for Mountain Lakes. So even if Mount, even if Weequake scores a touchdown on that first drive coming out, 
they will still trail no matter what. As uh, Gillespie getting ready to hold. Bradford Goodbar trying to go two for three tonight on PATs. And that one will sneak its way through to make it 20 to six. With 28 seconds to go here in the first half. Before this kickoff, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we will be right back with more action from Mountain Lakes. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he needed to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that Welcome back to Mountain Lakes. Hey, Oz, I see you, I see you there. Mountain Lakes getting ready to boot this one away. Bradford Goodbar out after the uh, walk-in touchdown there by Nico Dunn. Actually had to fight uh, for it. It's a little squib kick here by, by Goodbar and a muff there by Smith Marset. He does pick it up and has a great run going on down the far side of the field. And a stop there by the 39 yard line, 20 seconds left to go. Do you go for it or do you kind of run a couple plays then kneel on it if you're Coach Logan? Yeah, Ryan, I think you just gotta go into halftime down 20 to six. I think just take a knee on it, get a new game plan going into the second half. Cause right now, you know, besides that one drive, we Quake has ran the ball up the middle a lot. And so far Mountain Lakes for the most part has had an answer for it. But take into that half, take, in, take, some, uh, take good things out of that last drive that they had for the touchdown. Weequeg has two of their timeouts remaining. And the clock does stop for first downs in high school and college. So already Weequeg at an advantage if they do decide to go for it. And they have wideouts here, so looks like they're going to try something. Take a deep shot downfield maybe. Let's see. Martin on the first play takes a direct snap up the middle. Shaking some tackles. And it'll be a gain of five. And throwing him to the ground on the play there was number 58, James Few. And uh, one of the weak wave players came to his quarterback's defense after a little of a throw after the whistle was blown. Looks like we're going to take a timeout here. So that had a gain of six on that run. Ball spotted at the 45-yard line, and uh, we quick called their second time out of the half. They have one remaining, four seconds to go. I don't know the type of arm uh, that Zakir Martin has, but we'll see if they will utilize that here. Let's see if we can find out what kind of arm he's got. Worst case scenario, yeah. you just throw it down the field. It's like a punt, really. Yeah, and... Another point that's being made uh, by the offensive coordinators next to us, you see one of the coaches for uh, Weequick on the other side arguing that they called the timeout with 10 seconds to go on the clock. So we will see if they will adjust that. And they will give them the extra six seconds. Mountain Lakes fans not happy about that. But they yeah, but you time. saw the fist pump from the Weequay coach on the other side. So that gives them what was just now one play, two plays possibly, to uh, create a scoring opportunity here for the Indians. You just got to take a shot down. If they're going to go aggressive, which it seems that they are taking a timeout, they're going to throw the ball here. It's a quick out. It's smith Marset, a first down. And a timeout called with five seconds to go as he has a first down up near the 41-yard line. That was a great, great play call there by, by Weequake. They were running prevent, 
and everyone was downfield. Gave him a great chance to get a good catch and run. Yeah, good blocking on that screen on that wide receiver screen there. To Smith Marset. There's gonna I think there's gonna be more time left on this clock. I think they call this timeout. Yeah, they called the timeout seconds. with about four or five seconds to go. But either way, it would probably be the final play of the first half. We quake down twenty to six. Quick shout out to one of our sponsors, the National Football Foundation. The Greater Morris County Chapter of the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame with the generosity of the Atlantic Health System has as its mission to promote the power of amateur football in developing the qualities of leadership, sportsmanship, competitive zeal, and the academic excellence in America's young people. The foundation honors the top senior scholar athlete from each team in Morris, Sussex, and Warren counties with a black tie dinner each year, and we hope to have that in person this year in the spring over at the Madison Hotel. Do we get to go? I don't know. Oh. Well, that would be nice. Yeah, yes, it would. I'm in the mood for a black tie dinner. The food there I've heard is great. Is it? Yes. Little score updates for everybody. Westmore Central and Old Japan tied at zero in the second quarter. Oh, sorry. And here's Zakir Martin. Meanwhile, here... And uh, he's just going to try to run this one where he can as time expires in the second half. Great defense downfield by Mountain Lakes as they head into the half with a 20-6 to lead over Weequake. They've already scored twice as many points as they did in the last game. And they are in prime position to go to their first sectional final in seven years. We'll talk about what both teams have to do to be successful in the next half when we come back. Until then, enjoy the halftime entertainment. For Nick Federico, I'm Ryan Sudol. I'll see you in a bit. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he needed to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him, and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that I've been willing to take the time to invest in myself so that I could better serve them. And for me, being of service to others is the single most important thing in my life today. Getting the opportunity to work closely with families and businesses with complex needs, helping them to define their long-term goals, and providing them with meaningful solutions is a thrill for Brian. It makes him feel like he's back on the athletic field again. For a free financial consultation, contact Brian Riley at bryley at financialguide.com or call him at 973-738-4248.
Parsippany, New Jersey. I just think that training there in and out of the season, year round, always kept me ready for any competition. Uh, the individualized training that Mike Kenny provides at Pinnacle really just, I don't think, can be matched anywhere else. Hi, my name is Cameron Khan. I've been training at Pinnacle for two and a half years. I recently just won the New Jersey State Championship, and I would recommend Pinnacle to all the athletes. Love it when more Sussex Sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through more Sussex Sports award winning service that brings you play by play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. Latman, realtor with Keelan Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service and exceptional results for all real estate in morris and somerset counties contact rich latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com samino and Philippone is a new jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com.
I've worked with many mortgage companies over the years, from the big banks where I thought I could get the best, most competitive rate, to the small guys where I thought I'd get more personalized service. And I never thought I could have it both until I met Family First. Family First gave me the most competitive rates in the market with unmatched service. Their team is incredible. They were always at arm's reach, ready to answer my questions, help me weigh different loan options, and work through some of the most challenging closing situations and timelines. I have to say without a doubt, Family First is the best in the business, and I strongly recommend them if you're looking to finance or refinance your home. My name is Mickey Gall, and I'm a UFC fighter. What I love most about being a UFC fighter and being an MMA fighter is I think it's the ultimate expression, it's the ultimate sport. I go to Below Body Bar because as hard as I train, I need to recover just as hard. And Below Body Bar has all the necessary recovery equipment. They have cryotherapy, massage, infrared sauna, cryo spot treatment, and a whole lot more. I'm Mickey Gall, and I love Below Body Bar. Have you ever needed a day to relax during these stressful times? Well, then look no further than Modern Acupuncture. Modern Acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. At CCM, County College of Morris, athletics are on. CCM baseball. CCM volleyball. CCM basketball. Oh yeah, it's on. CCM's women's soccer. It's on. Nine athletics programs. CCM softball. It's on. CCM golf. It's on. Esports. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's on. CCM, County College of Morris. Go Titans! At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. state-of-the-art technology makes it brilliant. The Lexus NX, with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, and Amazon Alexa compatibility, standard. Experience the crossover in its most visionary form. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at SussexMeat.com.
guys, amazing news. Tickets for the Morristown Rally 2021 season are dropping later this week. You can find them in the Instagram bio for the Morristown Rally. They're expected to sell out. Stay tuned, and we look forward to seeing you at Men in Sports Arena. At Ivy Rehab, we're here for you after your surgery. We're here when you're in a rush. When you're in pain. When you're aching. When you don't have a prescription. <sighs> we're here to get to the root cause of your pain instead of just masking your symptoms. We're here. We are here. We're over there too. We're all over. So come to Ivy Rehab first. We'll be here for you. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the, the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed. So give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage, Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. There are many names for enthusiasts. But there's only one way to become one. By going all in. The Lexus IS. With a lower center of gravity, a more responsive suspension, and an aggressive wider stance. The Lexus IS is all in on the sports sedan. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer.
Welcome back to Wilkins Field here at Mountain Lakes High School. Just two minutes away from starting the second half here in the semifinal game of North 2 Group 1. The number one seed in the section, Mountain Lakes leading the four seed in the section, We Quake, 20 to 6 at the half. And while these teams warm up, we got some score updates for you. And uh, a couple games actually went final. One of them, in, uh, one of them started at six o'clock. Sparta, in a result that no one expected. People, some people were saying that Sparta was going to win, but in a close one, they beat Riverdale. They blanked them, 42 to nothing. They go to the sectional final next week, and just what a turnaround from last year for Sparta. Last year. The word was Sparta is not the Sparta that they used to be yeah. this year with Austin Fratura and the core that he has around him and the improved running game. Yes. I don't see a reason why they're going to be stopped. I'm with you there, Ryan. They put up 63 points last week in the quarter. In the quarterfinals and the semis, they put up 40. They put up 40 plus. Awesome showing by Sparta. And then we're talking about other games here. Newton up 14-7 on Jefferson going into the second half here. Maybe a little closer than people thought, but people can't sleep on Jefferson right now. They're playing very good football going coming into the playoffs I should say and we have a final score as well a game that started at six o'clock uh, St. Augustine has defeated Del Barton 28 to 13 in the uh, non-public uh, uh, semifinals so they will go to the sectional final congratulations to the Hermits mm -hmm. Hermits good yes just the Hermits yeah, interesting right. like kind of like hillbillies same kind of thing yeah Westmore Central up 7-0 on Old Japan second quarter 242 to go there in that first half so and the most shocking score of them all so far Hanover Park the eight seed oh. who knocked off the one seed Ramsey last week is currently up 21 to 7 over number four seeded Waldwick I don't remember the last time that an eight seed made a sectional final in the state of New Jersey it's definitely been before I started doing this back yes. in 2017 so we'll keep you updated on that but meanwhile here we quick deferred the toss to the second half, so they will get the ball first down, down 14 points. What do you do if you're Coach Logan to improve on the first half? You know what, Ryan? It's difficult to say because you know We Quiet has loved to run the football, like we said, loved to run the football up the middle. Uh, I think you got to start, you know, incorporating some pass game here. You know, really get your quarterback number seven, Zakir Martin, in this game. You know, he could make a difference here, but we'll see. Keith Jenkins and Asim Smith Marset back deep to receive there, but it doesn't go deep. It's a short one. On the recovery there was uh, was uh, Leroy Singleton, and the drive will start at around the 45 yard uh, around the 35 yard line, excuse me, of the Indians. On the Mountain Lake side of things, they're doing everything good. I mean, defensively they're holding up. They're holding up that run game with Weequayek, and offensively they've been really just as good as they have been all year. They really. Attacking with that run game, you know, Cade Chuckman, Nico Dunn, who's got two touchdowns tonight, Jimmy Elliott, Jordan Hernando, they've all been very good tonight. So everything's been working yeah. well in favor of the Lakers. And a big concern was Justin Hernando, Jordan's older brother. A nagging injury is keeping him out of action tonight. Kept him out of action last game. But the other guy's picking up the slack for him. And here's Weequake's leading rusher, Rashawn Marshall, with a good gain there on first, on first down. Had 178 yards and two touchdowns against Mountain Lakes back in their game on the 29th. Very different uh, result happening here tonight, but the thing we have to put into perspective is that it's not raining. <laughs> and it's not That's a, a big factor. It's not a monsoon as off the direct snap. Here's Akira Martin, great speed out of the backfield, and he has the first down at midfield. And actually, no, that was actually a direct snap to his Seam Smith Marquette. I apologize. The Wildcat snap there, and no huddle offense for Wee Quick right now. Yeah, first time we've seen that all night, and now Smith Marquette goes to the bottom of your screen here. He's see if he can make a play on the outside. He's being defended by number 15, Cullen Fagan, the corner, senior, 6'2, 190. Great matchup. And it's a draw. They've been running this a lot. Rashawn Marshall again, past the 45, just a couple yards short of the first down. And uh, what a start to this drive here for Weequay. Best hey. drive they've had. Best start to a drive they've had so far. Yeah, absolutely, Ryan. Besides that one touch, besides that one touchdown drive that they had, they're running the ball now effectively. And they're catching Mountain Lakes off guard a little bit, and let's see if they can keep it up. So far, so good. Gate of seven, second down and three, three wideouts here for Weequay, and a high snap as Martin tries to spin away, and he is going to be stopped. 
behind the line by a bunch of Mountain Lakes defenders. And the loss on the play will be two. And Tim Christ, the linebacker, also, of course, the quarterback, in there on the tackle. That's the uh, second time they've sacked Martin here tonight. And a high snap. Martin forced to run it. Great job to avoid tacklers. He has a first down. And a great tackle past the 30-yard line on the play by Ryan McLaughlin, but an even better run by Zakir Martin. That shows the athleticism of the quarterback, Zakir Martin. We've seen him throw a couple of times, not so much, maybe once or twice, though. But obviously the strength of his game is running the ball. And Zakir Martin, 35 rushing yards against Mountain Lakes the last time they played. Four for five in that game for 47 passing yards and a touchdown. I'd say he's, I'd say that he's going to stay at around that in this game tonight because, you know, if it, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And both teams, the run is working to a T despite what the score says. Trips at the top of the screen. It'll be a bubble screen, and it's caught on the play. It's a first down for Weequake. Elijah Motley has it inside the 15. I mean, it wasn't a pretty throw by Zakir Martin. I thought that, that was, was up uh, there for grabs. That was very much up there for grabs, but able to execute the play there. Nice bubble screen there by Elijah Motley. Get some good yards after the catch, and Weequake is setting themselves up for very good success here early on in the second half. Ball spotted at the 16 yard line. Martin, draw to Marshall. And a great sweep at the legs tackle on the play there. And uh, yes, that was uh, Giacomo Vavacqua. Had a blocked punt return for a touchdown against Madison this year. He doesn't get much, uh, didn't get many tackles, but he is one of those utility players that can make a play at a moment's notice. Three yards on the play there. Second down and seven, three wide or two wide receivers in the game for Weequake. And it's Smith Marset again on a Wildcat. And oh my goodness! Big hit there by the Mountain Lakes defense. He went right down. Could not see who made the hit, but an absolutely crushing blow. Great to see Marset acting as if nothing happened. He's up and moving. And he had the end zone in sight, but was met by a brick wall as it brings up third down and four at the nine yard line. They're gonna line. go to the same formation, Ryan, third time. Oops. Oh, and a step goes over the quarterback's head. Scoops it up at around the 30, and it is going to be a, so actually no, that's what Smith Marsh said again. He stays on his feet, and it's gonna be a stat, a sack that goes all the way back to the 31 yard line. That is a loss of 20 on the play, and that will bring up third down and 22. Wequayek had the momentum. Fourth down and 22. Wequayek had the momentum going in. It takes one play to screw everything up, and that high snap there, Smith Marset couldn't get his hands on it in time and tried to make something out of it, but nothing doing there for Weequay. So fourth down and 24. Country mile. Ball spotted on the 31 yard line after the high snap that went over the Wildcat quarterback, Smith Marset's head. Third time on this drive, he's, in, he's been involved in those sort of plays. And here's Zakir Martin looking deep, and he overthrows his target on fourth down. Turnover on downs, Mountain Lakes will take over. I don't know if I love that play call to go for it on fourth down and 24, but do what you will. You would have gone for a little short pass over the middle to try to get some yards back. Would you have went for a little shorter pass over the middle to try to get some of that yardage back? I would have. Kind of like mean, an arm punt kind of deal. I mean, I would have. I mean, I don't know how much you trust your kicker from that far out either, but. Freshman kicker. Yeah. Maybe a little pooch punt. Maybe to set them up deep in their own territory. Maybe get lucky. Uh, but nonetheless, Mount Lakes is set up in their own territory. And Weequake's uh, momentum to start the second half just went right away. So Mount Lakes starts this drive. After the mishap on offense by Weequake on their own 31 yard line. And they go left side with it. And they had that one snuffed out immediately. On the stop there was number 50, Das Sonialu. If I'm Weequake on defense in the second half, Ryan, you gotta shore up those ends there, force Tim Christ maybe running up the middle, force runs up the middle for Mountain Lakes so their strength. <laughs> is getting out of the outside and going for some explosive runs. So, and, and that was a that was a ten yard penalty on the holding as well. 
So they'll accept that. It'll be first down and 20. And uh, you saw Sonia Lou kind of vibing to the drumline music on this side of the field. Chris looking to throw. Looking towards McLaughlin. Now goes to the middle, and it is almost caught by Nico Dunn, but it went through his hands. Too much of a rocket for him to handle. So that brings up second down and 20. Yeah, that throw a little bit behind. A little bit behind Nico Dunn there. We want to thank our technical director for giving us a heap and helping of pistachios thank here. Thank you, sir. Wow. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the loud crunching you might hear. No, it's delicious. <laughs> 7.28 to go in the third quarter. Mountain Lakes, second down and 20. Lucky they are having a drive at this point at all. Almost gave up a touchdown, but a high snap for Weekway ruined those chances as uh, Kate Shuckman takes the screen past the 20-yard line. And it is going to be third down and 14 from the 22-yard line. It'll be third down. It'll be third down long now. I mean, still a lot of time in this one, right? It's only 20 to 6. Weekway gets the ball here. They can have that momentum they had starting the second half here before the botched uh, snap by the center and put them in deep territory, but still a lot of game left. Christ, looking to throw on third and long. Airing it out, going towards McLaughlin, and he threw it into double coverage, and it goes to the ground. In on the coverage for Weekway was Motley and smith Marset. So the punt unit now coming in for Mountain Lakes. That was a dangerous throw there by Tim Christ. Kind of just heaved it up and said, let's see what I can do here. Good thing it didn't get intercepted, not a turnover. And looks like Shuckman will come on and punt. Back deep to receive is Rashawn Marshall. He's He could be a lethal return man if he gets a chance. And he's lining up at around midfield. You'll see more of a rugby punt here from Cage Shuckman. He runs it out, gets it away, and a booming punt. And Marshall had to back up 10 yards. He muffs it for a second, but recovers. And he stays on his feet near midfield and brings it past midfield. So a great, great run. It's and gonna have been a nightmare for Rupert. Oh yes, Blake, but they've had so many close calls. They. They, uh, muffed a, uh, they muffed a squib kick earlier on in the game that was almost costly, and actually, actually ended up with it Absolutely. very much near where that first one was. And they will start this drive in Mount Lakes territory, trying to cut this one to a score. 7-0-1 to go in the third quarter in this North 2 Group 1 semifinal matchup. The winner of this game will face the winner of Cedar Grove and Booton. We don't have the exact score right now of Cedar Grove and Booton, but Cedar Grove is handling Booton right now, so it looks like, barring a miracle, that the winner of this game will face Cedar Grove in the final next week. Three wideouts in the game here for Weequake. Draw to Marshall, and he is dragged down after a gain of two on the play. On the stop for Mountain Lakes there was James Few. Had a sack earlier in the game himself. Give credit to Weequake. They've been sticking to their guns, Ryan, right? They've been running the football up the middle, and some of it's worked, sometimes it hasn't, but they've been sticking to their guns and getting some momentum here on offense in the second half. We have a score update from that Booten game. 35-7, to seven, Cedar Grove leads with 2.17 left in the third quarter. Also, 2.15 left in the half. Wes Morris leads Old Tapan 14 to nothing as that pass by Martin intended for his receiver. That was Ekeith Jenkins, goes over his head, so that brings up third down and eight. Big decision here for Week Wag. What do you do here on third down and nine? What kind of play you're running here? I don't know, Ryan. I think um, you know third down and nine. Maybe a little draw play. Maybe catch you know Mountain Lakes off. You know that seems to be spreading themselves out here on defense. Let's see. I keep Jenkins the man in motion, and it's play action over the middle on a slant. He has his man for the first down. Great play there for Weekway. Great play call as Trinade Hay has his first catch of the game. It's a good play and that'll call put there. them past the 35-yard line. It's a good play call there on the play action pass there. Really the first thing we've the first time we've seen that from Weekway tonight. Good accurate ball there by Martin to his guy right in the slot. 
Caught Mountain Lakes off guard. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the 32 yard line. Akeem Jenkins comes in motion again. Play action again, throwing again, going deep and overthrows his man who was in the end zone. That was Elijah Motley. And the offensive coordinators up here in the booth wanted that one really, really bad. Yes, they did. And they had an opportunity on the outside. One on one coverage. Motley did have a step on him, but just overthrown just a little bit. So that brings up second down. We quake, I think as each play goes on, Ryan, tell me if you agree with me, momentum is kind of shifting their way a little bit. All it takes is a, is a mistake like they had on the last that's drive right. to derail that momentum, but that's water under the bridge now and they're doing just what they did on that previous drive. Marshall on the draw, gets met right at the line by two Mountain Lakes players. On the initial con that on contact there was Sam Veach, the sophomore linebacker. 5'9", 170, made a hit like he was a 250 pounder there. This is a big third down and nine here for Wee Quake. They wanna move the chains and really start getting something going. Down 20 to six, five, about 5.20 to go here in the third quarter. I think it's a throwing situation for them right here. Would you go with a similar play like they had to Hay for the first down? I would. I mean, and also, you know, don't outrule the screen. The bubble screen, it's worked a couple times here in this one for them either. Akeep Jenkins is the receiver in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Play action. Martin going end zone, and it is tipped in the air as he overthrew smith Marset. In on the coverage was Cullen Fagan. That brings up fourth down and eight. I don't hate it. I mean, it's a good shot there. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage there on the outside, but... Unfortunately, now it's a fourth down nine situation. They're going to go for it, no doubt. They're in no man's land. Secure Martin getting the play from the sideline. Defense chant coming from the parents and the student section here at Mountain Lakes. And we want to thank the Hurt Alumni Foundation for making our Mountain Lakes broadcasts all throughout this season possible. Martin with four wideouts. Martin over the middle, and it is go, goes through the receiver's hands. It was number 33 who it was intended for, and it's another turnover on downs, the second one so far for Weequake. Mountain Lakes takes over. Yeah, there was a lot going on there in the middle of the field, Ryan. There was a lot of cluster there. That would have been a tough throw either way for Zakir Martin of Wee Quake, but another situation where they had to go for it. They were in no man's land, like you said, and they turn it over on downs again, unsuccessful on fourth down once again. Second straight drive that happened, and yep. right near the same spot. First time was that uh, fourth and forever they had after the, uh, the bad snap. So now Mountain Lakes trying to get some separation here, up 14 with 4.54 to go in the third quarter, trying to get to their first sectional final since 2014. Halftime at West Morris and Ultapan. West Morris up 13 to nothing. Fakes the handoff twice, does Christ. Looking for options, doesn't see any, and he'll just uh, run out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that would have been a difficult throw to make if you're Tim Christ, kind of go across your body off to your left side, your weak side, trying to throw across your body and get yourself going there. It would have been a difficult throw either way. So a good veteran. Good, good veteran move there by Tim Chris. Lennox Bonsu for Wee Quick was there to push him out. Second down and nine for the herd. Two wideouts here for the herd. And that is a run to Jimmy Elliott that goes nowhere. Tackle on the play made by Taheed Simmons. Third down and long coming up for the herd. The quarterback in there was Ben Minter for Mountain Lakes. I don't know what happened to Tim Crisp, but uh, he's not in the game right now. Trying to look for him here on the sidelines. 
but I do not see, He's <laughs> laying see down him right, right now. And, yeah, he is actually laying down on the sidelines, and they're working on what looks to be his left leg. So a developing situation here. He is up on his feet, though, so that's a good sign to see. But for now, Ben Miniter is the quarterback, the backup here for the Herd. Quick handoff up the middle. It's Nico Dunn, and he will have a modest gain. Not enough for a first down, about three or four yards short. Yeah, again, the situation here, I don't know. It's fourth down and short. I think this is very manageable for Mountain Lakes. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they go for it, but it looks like they're not going to. looks like they're going to punt. And there's a player down for Mountain Lakes. We'll let them sort that out. And while we wait, we are going to head to a quick commercial break. We will be right back. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family-owned operations since Welcome back. The player on the play that was down was the running back, Nico Dunn. He's currently on the sideline for the moment. Helmet off. So two injuries, key ones at that for Mountain Lakes. As Tim Christ remains on the sideline after his leg injury, Ben Miniter in for him. And they will elect to punt this one off. Cage Shuckman back to, uh, back to punt. Rashawn Marshall back deep to receive. And we have a whistle. Timeout on the field by Mountain Lakes. Their first timeout of the half clock stops at 3.32 to go in the third quarter. What do you think they're going to talk about here? I don't know, Ryan. I think Tim Tim Christ actually is now on the field now. so Maybe they, they called it so we can get out on the field. Yeah, they could change You could change your mind here. And Tim Christ, you know, it's positive, does have his helmet on. And as we're now playing jump around here at, here at I Mount I would Lakes. jump around, but we got too much equipment in here. We can pretend. We can do this. Here we go. Thank God the camera's not on us. Don't you That's dare right. turn that, that <laughs> scoreboard camera towards us. I'll walk. That would be great <laughs> for the wrap up report. Oh, yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> for just in general. <laughs> Score updates here. 14 play, 86 yard oh, drive. Look, we're to jumping start around. The, Sorry oh, yeah. to interrupt you, but we're jumping around. A bunch of people jumping around in front Heck of us, yeah. shaking the bleachers. 86 yard drive to start the half for. Sorry about that, folks. 86-yard drive to start the half for Jefferson. A touchdown and an extra point. We are tied up at 14. Much to the delight of our friend here, Nick Federico, Jefferson alum. 5-14 to go in the third quarter over there. And a flag comes in here. We Quake says it is on Mountain Lakes. It is. False start. False start. That'll back them up five yards. Another score update from the aforementioned huge shocker possibly in the making. Waldwick, the four seed against the eight seed Hanover Park oh in group two. 21 to 14, Hanover Park leads after a touchdown by Waldwick, 3.33 left to go in the third quarter. George Muha is probably biting his nails right now. Oh my God, and if they do win, I cannot wait for the after hour show here tonight. And this punt from Kate Shuckman takes a huge weak quick bounce. It wasn't that good of a punt to begin with and great field position for the Indians to start off with inside the 40 yard line of Mountain Lakes. That's probably the best case scenario they've had right now. Yeah, been every single time that they've gotten in this position though, it's stalled out. This is true, but hopefully they regroup there on the sideline. The offense got a little bit of a talking to and We'll see what happens. They've been so far so good here in the second here in the second half. It hasn't resulted in any points, but so far so good from Weekway. I like what I see in their offense in the second half. It's going to be a great conclusion to this one. Don't go anywhere. And one of the nice folks that are helping us bring you the game tonight is the Rogers Foundation, a new nonprofit whose mission is giving back to the community through volunteer service and financial support. Go to Rogers Foundation. That's R O D G E R S Foundation dot org to learn more. Start of this drive for Wee Craig, trying to cut into this lead, down 14 against Mountain Lakes. And it's a draw to Marshall, going right, now tries to cut it up, and oh my goodness, what a tackle! Ryan McLaughlin wraps him up and drops him for a huge loss. Ryan McLaughlin making his point known on defense. He's had a good day on offense, wrote a couple penalties, caught a touchdown pass, doing it on this side of the ball now, making an impact for Mountain Lakes. 
described as the best overall player on the team by Fusco. He can do it on either side of the ball. They will give him forward progress, though, much to the chagrin of the folks in front of us. But either way, what a great open field tackle. And it does result in a, in a, in a, in a loss as well. So kind of works out well for both sides here. And someone in the crowd is still yelling. <laughs> There's always somebody yelling down there, always. <laughs> I've been doing this for too long. You're right. <laughs> Martin, play action. Looking, and it is caught on a slant. Elijah Motley. Elijah Motley in there on the catch. And there is a flag on the play. Not sure who it is on. And it is on Weequake. A legal man downfield. And an offensive lineman going downfield. Quiet. That's another penalty costing him a lot. So the first, uh, the first, first it was the uh, the 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 muff snap that went over the Wildcat quarterback, Isim Smith Marquette's head, and now what would have been a first down inside the 20, after the toss over the middle to Elijah Motley, is now second down and 15 at the 45 yard line. Martin throwing again, and it is caught by Smith Marquette at the 30-yard line, so they get those yards back, most of them. It'll be second down and uh, third down in short, excuse me, from the 30. Yeah, and kind of threw it behind this Smith Marquette, but all that yeah. matters is that he got it there. Exactly, and that, that was a dangerous throw. Great adjustment by Smith Marquette. Obviously has football in his blood. His brother currently plays for the Minnesota Vikings. Had a catch a couple weeks ago of six yards. And the handoff exchange was fumbled. And Mountain Lakes may have it. And they do. That's Mountain Lakes ball, yep. It was very weird, Ryan. It looks like that Zakir Martin kind of pushed the ball forward. And Mountain Lake, that made it easier for them to pounce on it. Mountain Lakes recovers the fumble and another costly mistake for Weequaik as again, a, a drive that started in Mountain Lakes field position stalls out. Mountain Lakes gets the ball again, but again, Mountain Lakes has stalled out themselves. They have. Weequaik's defenses, defense has held strong on these drives too. But like you said, strange thing, it, it was almost like Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Yeah. He just looked at the ball almost. for a second there, did Zakir Martin. First play of this drive is a run up the middle, gain of four. And uh, wait a minute, the ball came out, they're saying, Weequake may have it. They did. And Weequake has it. Mountain Lakes gives it away, the very next, uh, Weequake gives it away, the very next play, Mountain Lakes gives it away. What a turn of events here. So it's kind of like, That was that was amazing though. That would it's how things turn around just like that. A lucky break for Weequake as Nico Dunn coughed it up at the end of the play, and they start right where they gave it up, right near where they gave it up at the 40-yard line. And it's like we're watching the game in repeat because this is where they started almost every single one of their offensive drives dating back to midway through the first quarter. Absolutely, Ryan, and it's 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 just crazy to me that now you know kind of wipe that clean for Weequake that turnover they had. Wipe that completely out of your mind and go back to doing what you were doing. 136 to go in the third quarter. Weequake needs a score and they need it bad. Martin, bubble screen, top of the screen to Elijah Motley. Evades two tacklers and two more, and he'll get right near the first down marker. See what spot they give him. Good shiftiness there by Elijah Motley. It's gonna be close to a first down. I think it's just gonna be short. It'll be second and one. Second down and one, high snap there, no problem. He gets it back and a tackle right at the line. Pushing him back was Peter Branton. On the carry was Carell Wright, but it will be enough for a weak wake first down. Eli, 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 Eli. 
if I am a weak way coach, this is the most optimistic I've felt in a long while about a drive. Networks. Our high speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500. Let's see. Oh, it's a, it's a wide receiver pass. It seems Smith Marquette tried to throw it down the field. He did, and it was intended for Elijah Motley, and no flag on the play for pass interference, which is what the coordinators next to us were looking for. What do you think, Nick? I don't know, Ryan. That's kind of one of those situations where you're kind of like, ah, if you're an official, you're like, I don't know. That could be risky. I mean, Mount Lakes has got a couple of those calls, but I'm not really sure there. That, well, that one really could have went either way. So. It was a toss out to Asim Smith Marquette, threw down the field towards Elijah Motley, and it was broken up by the back of the defensive defensive back, so that's why they're asking for the flag. But either way, second down and 10. Martin looking to throw again, gets it underneath. It's Motley, and he is shaking and baking for a first down. And they want to run there. one more play before the quarter ends. Good job there by Motley, but you know, I'm thinking back on that play now, and you know the defensive back didn't did have his back to the quarterback and not to the ball, but it's going to be interesting. It's that may come back to bite them, or if we quake scores, it could not matter at all. Try and contain yourself for the score update. I'm going to give you in just a minute. Here's a run for we quake again. It's close to the first down marker. Rashawn Marshall again. It'll be second down and short from around the 10 yard line. End of three, Jefferson up 20 to 14 over Newton. The six seed networks. Our high speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSF. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast planet networks so fast it's worth the wait but we have a timeout here and we'll be, we'll be back with you in just a moment the della portis effect Hey guys, Pac Laurie here. Um, just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Pinnacle Athletic Development. Um, if you haven't heard about it, um, it's run by Mike Kennedy. Um, he's been doing this for 20 years, um, best in the business. Um, trained some some of the best you know, New Jersey high school wrestling athletes. What's up, guys? This is Charlie Cunningham out of Seton Hall Prep, New Jersey. Uh, I'm currently a Division Three college wrestler, and I want to give a quick shout out to Pinnacle Athletic Development in Parsippany, New Jersey. I just think that train there in and out of the season year round, always coming right. Welcome back to Mountain Lakes. Second down and two for Week Quake from the ten. It's a direct snap to a Steve Smith Marquette, and he breaks through for the touchdown. They've been they've been running that wildcat formation, Ryan, in this first in this second half. It's been effective each time, finally resulting some points for them. After all the mishaps, all the penalties, the turnovers. The high snaps, the fumbles, the weak highs, the lows, everything. Everything. They finally get points on the board. It's 20 to 12 with 11:54 left to go in the final frame of regulation. A chance to to uh, cut the lead to seven with Ibrahim Sisse on the field. If they decide to, if to, if they decide to go for it, because I think that they're keeping the offense out on the field. Yeah, they're they're going yeah, they for are. two here. They are going to. It's an aggressive move here. Make this less than a touchdown game here. If you get it, this would be big for Week Quake. So they keep the offense out on the field, going to go for two to try to make it a six-point game. Zakir Martin back in at quarterback. Rashawn Marshall, the, the back next to him. Rolling right, under heavy pressure, looking to the end zone, and it is caught for the two-point conversion. And that is Rashawn Marshall on the catch. Huge conversion there for Wee Quayak, 20 to 14. Ryan, we got a game here in the fourth quarter. I, I said earlier we're having a, we're gonna have a great conclusion and it's shaping up to be that way. 
if Weequay can stop another offensive drive by Mountain Lakes that they have to a T lately, a huge chance for Weequay here. 11.54 to go in the fourth quarter, 20 to 14. Mountain Lakes just has to answer now. You know, they had that turnover. They only had one. They only had that one possession in that third quarter. Ryan Weequay completely controlled this third quarter. And now it's resulted in a six, only a six point lead for Mountain Lakes. Lakes has to control the clock here and you know, make some explosive plays when they need to. They need to get something going here in the fourth quarter. We have two finals here. The winner of this game will be facing Cedar Grove as they handle Booten in the North 2 Group 1 semifinal, 35 to seven. Congratulations to Booten on a great season. We don't have the official score on this game, but Mount Olive, unfortunately, after such a great year, has lost the, the uh, North 1 Group 4 semifinal to Northern Highlands. So those are the two finals we have just gotten. And we'll continue to bring you those score updates as they come in for the remainder of this one here, which is shaping up to have a great ending. Ibrahim Sisse here kicking it off for Weequake. It hasn't gone to the deep men yet so far. The deep man is Jimmy Elliott back there, I believe. And it will go to the second level yet again. It is Ryan McLaughlin on the return. Weird seeing him on a kickoff return and a great special team stop pumping up the sideline for Week Wake. Ball spotted at the 29. This is, I believe, the deepest that that uh, Mountain Lakes has started to drive off of a kickoff. I think you're right, Ryan. And it's going to really test Mountain Lakes here to see if they can go really the length of the field to go get some points here. I know they're up 20 to 14, but Week Wake is surging here in the second half. 27-14 Jefferson. <laughs> Nothing else. I just wanted to see the – he fist pumped, ladies and gentlemen. He's really excited. I'm not biased at all. Oh, no. I promise. You're not, you're not calling that game, so you're no. good. No. <laughs> but I will have something to say about it on the wrap-up report on Thursday oh, if yes. the score remains the same. Of course. We That's don't know all I'll say. How good Newton is. They can easily come back. But this is the first time this year that they've really had their backs up against the wall. Speaking of backs against the wall – Mountain Lakes on offense must feel that way even though they have the lead. Here's Nico Dunn stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And on the stop for week wake was number 22, Emmanuel Asante. I mean, Ryan, they're doing what they, they're what they doing, what Mountain Lakes does, running on the outside. It's been their strength all night long, but that time week wake able to get to the corner and very good defense there by the Indians. Second and nine, two wideouts in the game. It's Shuckman and McLaughlin. Chris looking to throw, looking to find McLaughlin. Oh, and he somehow comes up with the catch after it was bobbled by the defensive back, Elijah Motley, and he is down on the field. I mean, you can't get better coverage like that than Elijah Motley did for Wee Quayek, but great catch, great hands, getting it on the shoulder pad with one hand and Ryan McLaughlin. Great catch there. That's the second type of that catch that we've seen so far. Earlier we had a tip ball that went right past the defender and into the hands of Cade Shuckman that confused the everybody here, including the fans. Yes. And that time a great catch by McLaughlin in coverage there. And, of course, uh, good to see Motley, who it looked like he got a little bit of a stinger there, up on his feet and back onto the play and right back onto coverage against McLaughlin at the top of the screen. This is a big third and six, Ryan. Huge. Fakes the handoff twice. Christ, looking towards McLaughlin, throwing that way, and it goes right through his hands. Great coverage on the play by Motley. Fourth down and six. That is the not not what you wanted there for Mountain Lakes. Third to fourth down and six here. Three and out is, is the absolute last thing that you wanted here. And Weequayek going to get ready to receive this punt. What a turn of events here at Mountain Not as good field position as Wee Quake has been used to yes. here in this second half. So that does play a factor. This but is the deepest they've started. Absolutely. But so far, Wee Quake in this second half, it's been their game to win. 
What a game here. Just a bunch of crazy results going on all over the place, and we will be breaking it down tonight at 10.30. George Muha, myself, and Clark Eaton will be live on the More Sussex Sports YouTube channel for the After Hours Show. We will bring you the score updates and all the top performers from tonight's state semifinal games. And just so you know, Ryan, if Jefferson does win, I will be blowing up that comment section. <laughs> just so you know. Be I prepared. figured that. Be prepared. Yeah, you, you've done it in the past. <laughs> I'm not holding anything to you. Okay. First down from the 19. Martin takes it himself after faking the handoff to Marshall. And he is met by two Mountain Lakes players as they, they tried to rip the ball out of his hands there at the end. I believe in there initially was Jimmy Elliott. Gate of five on the play. This would be a good time for Wee Quayag maybe to catch Mountain Lakes off guard with a big pass here. And we saw it before in the second half that, you know, able to catch them off guard with some slant passes, did get taken back for a penalty, but Wee Quayag has all the freedom right now on offense. Time update for that for that Jefferson Newton game. 8 11 to go. So 27-14 with 8-11 to go. And another muff snap here for Zakir Martin. He tries to recover, but he will be sacked. Looks like Martin took his took his eye off the ball there for a second. Wanted to do something with it before he could get to it. Big, big first time break there. His, first time they've called his name tonight. Renato Febby on the sack. That was a big, big opportunity there for Mountain Lakes. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. It's hard, okay. to, it's hard to hear you. Not a problem. <laughs> it's getting loud on That's the side. That's okay. And Coach Fusco on the phone said he needs to get into the backfield for them to get successful, Febby does. And he mm -hmm. did there a sack on the play. So it is now third down and nine from the 20. Mount Lakes really needs a big stop here. They need to get the ball back in their offense's hands. Three wide outs in the game for Weequake. Martin looking to throw. Rushes out of the pocket, throws across his body on the run, and it is just out of the reach of his receiver, Akeef Jenkins. Good job extending the play there by Zakir Martin, but nothing doing there on third down and nine. It's gonna have to be a punt situation here for Wee Quayak. Mountain Lakes catches a big break there on defense. 8.34 to go here in regulation. Mountain Lakes a six point lead, punt team. Hut team coming on here. Jacobson getting ready to punt this one away. Shuckman back at the 40. Yeah, he's not too deep. And it's a fake! Asib smith Marset was the guy who was putting the ball, and Mountain Lakes didn't notice it. We didn't notice it, and the fake doesn't work! That's a big, big, gutsy play call there by Weequayek. And this will set up Mountain Lakes very well. I don't know. I don't know about that one, Ryan. I know he probably had a hole and he saw it. And Smith Marset is an athlete and can make that play, but I don't know about that situation there. I'd like to say that that was the most obvious fake I think I've ever seen. They it ran a guy be right. who has been at Wildcat in this game before. He had a Wildcat touchdown earlier on to make the score 20 to, to 12, and then made it 21, 14, uh, 20 to 14 after the two point conversion. And they had him line up at punter. And Mountain Lakes, of course, saw that and stopped him a couple yards short of the first down. And after the and after that, a couple yard gain here by Nico Dunn up to the 25 yard line. That was a season defining decision there, if I were to say so. If Weequay ends up losing this game, that could be a big reason why. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, if he gets it, it's the call of the year. Sure. And it might be the call of the year for, for much different reasons now that he missed it. Second down and eight on the ensuing drive. Oh, and a great tackle there in the backfield as Jordan Hernando is stopped for a loss of two. That's loss of four, actually. It'll be third down and 11 from the 29. So this second half has been the story of, Absolutely. you know, minus, minus that weak way touchdown drive, mm -hmm. just missed opportunities for both sides on offense. Because if this stalls out, another one missed. Yeah, we got to remember, Mount Lakes has not had the ball at all. This is the longest they've had it in the second half this thus far. They've only ran four plays in the second half, if you could believe it. 
It's been all week quick. Christ pumps, looks, finds Cade Shuckman, and he will be stopped a couple yards short of the first down. Great open field tackle there by number 34 for Week Quick, Lennox Bonsu. And it is fourth and four. Three. Fourth and three. It'll be a big call here. They are going to keep the offense out on the field. It looks like. 6.37 to go and counting. Biggest play of the game defensively for Weequake. Weequake's loading the box here, Ryan. They're expecting run all the way. And they do run it. Jimmy Elliott trying to get the edge of AIDS one tackler and he does not get away. Turnover on downs for Mountain Lakes. I mean, we quake loaded the box there, Ryan. They went to the outside, like I've been saying, it's their strength all night long. But a little too fancy, I think, there for Mountain Lakes. We quake gets the ball back deep in their own territory. Back and forth we go. Turnover after turnover. We had a fumble and then another fumble back to back. Two straight turnover on downs drives for either side. And with 6.14 to go in regulation, it is Weequake ball down six. Mountain Lakes really needs a big defensive play here. They've been standing on their head, really, only letting up a touchdown. Draw to Marshall. Skips away from one tackle and is brought down for the first down. Again, they've been running on the inside. They haven't run too much on the outside as we quake, and it's been their bread and butter. They've worked, and they've also incorporated the pass game a heck of a lot here in the second half. And they've actually been much smarter with the passing game as well, going for much shorter throws instead mm -hmm. of the deep ones that almost cost them earlier. Draw to Marshall again. Marshall with great speed up to midfield. First down again. As crazy as it sounds, Ryan, I feel like we quake is getting stronger as the game goes on. And Mountain Lakes is just not. No huddle offense here for Weequake. 5.45 and counting. Marshall again. Try to bounce off blockers, but he gets bounced back. Stopped right at the line. And on the stop for Mountain Lakes was James Few. Another guy that was playing through an injury this year. Good stop there. Two yard gain for Weequayek. That's what Mountain Lakes, you know, they did well in the first, in the beginning of the game and they finally get a stuff there. But they've got to be able to prove it. Second down and eight. Coming up on five minutes to go in regulation. As gonna fly now, it starts to get played by the Mountain Lakes band. And look at who's flying. It's number two, Corral White for Weequayek. And he is in for the touchdown. Unbelievable breakaway speed there for Carell White, the senior. And that was a huge run, the biggest play of the game thus far for Wee Quack. The game is tied at 20 with 4.52 to go. What character showed by Wee Quack here in the second half. It's been their game to take here in the second half. Mountain Lakes, I don't know what happened at halftime, but their energy has just gone from, zero, from 100 to zero. Ibrahim Cisse is out to attempt the PAT. And if he puts it through, we quick will have their first lead of the game, 21 to 20. What a run. A 50 yard run. Freshman kicker, right? And a freshman kicker to try to put this one through the uprights to have a one point lead for the first time tonight. And a timeout called by Weequake. Maybe trying to think things over, maybe consider going for two, maybe? I mean, we'll see. Cissé has missed an extra point so far tonight. Or had one blocked. We'll see. So they have to keep that in mind, how, how how privy this defensive line on special teams of Mountain Lakes is to block PATs and field goals. Yeah, absolutely, but 
you got to think too. It's not the worst thing in the world if he misses. Worst case scenario, you're you're tied here. Worst case, absolute worst case scenario, you're tied here. Best case, obviously, you have a one point lead. Speaking of leads, the lead for Hanover Park has shrunk to seven. 5.49 to go, touchdown Waldwick. It is 28 to 21 Hornets, oh the eight boy. seed beating the, beating the four seed. And now a chance here for Ibrahim Cisse, the freshman kicker to put this one through to put Wee Quake up for the first time in the game. <laughs> and he puts it through. It is 21 to 20 Wee Quake over Mountain Lakes. And you hear the excitement coming from the coordinators up here in the booth. That would have been good from about 30. Yes. <laughs> it is a stressful game. It is a stressful game. Man. I could. <laughs> I could feel what you're. I, I almost wish I could feel what you're feeling right now. <laughs> oh, man. Great energy up here in the booth. And the weak wake offensive coordinators that have been uh, talking and talking all night, mostly with chagrin, now talking with glee as they have a one point lead, 21 to 20, 4.52 to go. And for the first time tonight, Mountain Lakes has to score. Have to, Ryan, have to. They haven't had any momentum whatsoever in the second half on offense. I think they've run a total of maybe nine plays, and they haven't been able to sustain their drives like they have in the first half, where they scored 20 points in the first half. This is not the same Mountain Lakes team we saw in the first half, I'm sorry to tell you. Now, I would like to point out, the Mountain Lakes band is currently playing the Tomahawk Chop, which is the song that the Weequake band plays. I don't know if this is some sort of mind games, I don't know if you can play mind games right now as it's down No, it's <laughs> well, it's the marching band. Sure. <laughs> so I think they could get away with playing some mind games. And one of the members of the Mountain Lake student section getting in front of the parents, telling them to get loud. Get in front of the student section, telling them to get loud. What an atmosphere here at Wilkins Field in Mountain Lakes. Huge drive coming up here for Mountain Lakes. Kick from Cissé is a short one. half they haven't done anything on offense it's time for them to prove it an interception by Jefferson and depending on how much time is left that may seal it 27 to 14 is the current score over in Newton Newton undefeated winners of I believe 17 straight games about to lose to Jefferson who will be advancing to the sectional final if that result holds no other score updates will continue to bring you those as they come in but here Mountain Lakes 447 to go down one and normally we'd be beefing this up if it was like a two minute drive, but yes. with the way these two teams eat up clock, this may be the final drive for Mountain it Lakes, you never know. Well, it very well could be, but the way Mountain Lakes been playing the second half, it's been three and out. Let's see, they can change it. First play, looking to throw, bubble screen to McLaughlin, and he is swallowed in the backfield. That is Rashawn Marshall. The sophomore running back and defensive back has been making plays on both sides of the ball all night, and a huge one there, loss of three. McLaughlin a little limpy coming up there he wants to stay in this game though that's the last thing that you need have your best player Ryan McLaughlin hurt clock continues to tick down two timeouts remain for Mountain Lakes two timeouts for week wake Chris looking to throw again and he finds Jimmy Elliott and he gets creamed he, had, he hung on to the ball, but what a hit. Or actually, did he hold on to the ball? We're not sure. But what a hit at the end of the play by number 33. We don't have his, his, his name on the roster, unfortunately. Big hit, though. Great hit, and Jimmy Elliott did hang on to the ball. Wow. They're gonna, yeah, they are definitely giving him the catch there, so. Only third down here for Mount Lakes. Big third down, so a huge come down from that huge hit. As Tim Chris is gonna look to throw on the run and he overthrows, underthrows Ryan McLaughlin. Fourth down and what looks to be five coming up here for the herd. And 
going back to that tackle by number 33 of Weequake, that was clean as clean can get. Sure. And people here, you know, they made the snap, the snap, uh, the snap judgment that that was a dirty hit, but no, he put that was a hands play. Yeah, that was very good. That was a very good hit, Ryan. And we saw it. We saw him too in the first half. He had another big hit there in the first quarter. But now fourth down to five. Huge. They are going for it. McLaughlin, the top of the screen. He's not looking to him. He's looking to Cade Shuckman, and the ball came out. But either way, it's an incomplete pass, a turnover on downs for Mountain Lakes. We quick will take over at the Mountain Lakes 43 or 40, 44 yard line. I mean, Ryan, there's nothing much to say here. Mountain Lakes just the defense too, uh, getting to Tim Chris at such a at such a fast rate for We Quick. I mean, the offensive line has kind of shattered here in the second here in the second half and the pressure was just getting to Tim Chris very fast he's been pressured all night if he's in the pocket for more than four seconds it's it's because he has to get flushed out of the pocket absolutely and he was all in control here and he was in the pocket there but great defense for the second straight play on the underneath throw that was intended for Shuckman it went incomplete and a turnover on downs Ball is actually going to be spotted at the th at the 39 yard line, and on the carry there that was uh, Kareel White, gain of four. Ball now at the 35 yard line. Two timeouts for Mountain Lakes. There are there is no two minute warning, so you got to start using your timeouts if you're the herd very very soon. Absolutely, Ryan. You need you need to stop here on defense. Have need need some kind of miracle a, a mistaken play there by week quake you need something here to get your team rolling get your offense back on the field to try and win this one trying to bring down as much time as possible 227 and ticking almost a, a a high snap there and some miscommunication there as martin kept it tried to cut it up field and gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. Great hit there. A couple great hits tonight by James Few. And it is now third down. And Mountain Lake's not calling a timeout. No, they're not, Ryan. They're going to trust their defense here, maybe call a timeout after if they don't get the fourth day, if they don't get third and down here, we quick. Now oh, they, they call a timeout, call a little bit of a late timeout. Clock stops at 2.14. What a game we are seeing here at Wilkins Field at Mountain Lakes. Mountain Lakes trying to get to their first sectional final. In seven years, they led 20 to six coming into the half. 15 unanswered points by Weequake after both teams failed to get anything going in the third quarter. All those points for Weequake did come in the fourth quarter. While we wait for this timeout to time back in, big shout out to the National Football Foundation, the Greater Morris County chapter of the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame with the generosity of the Atlantic Health System has as its mission to promote the power of amateur football in developing the qualities of leadership, sportsmanship, competitive zeal, and academic ex excellence in America's young people. The foundation honors the top senior scholar athlete from each team in Morris, Sussex, and Warren counties with a black tie dinner every year. 2.14 to go coming out of the timeout. It is third down and six. A must stop here for the herd defense. And we have a timeout by Weequake. Weequake doesn't want to, you know, they don't want to rush things here. You have the lead in Mountain Lakes territory. You don't want to rush things here. Take your time. Figure out what you need to do here on third down. Even if you don't convert, don't want to mess things up. A couple kneel downs away for Jefferson to go to the sectional final, Nick. Congratulations. It's, hey, it's not over till it's over. Not over till it's over. I'm not going to jinx anything. Nick, they're going to win. Okay. 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 Just, 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 just accept that. Okay. And then you know, okay. go home and celebrate later. I will. <laughs> <laughs> we have not had you and me that good of a stick this year when it comes to good games. Yeah. This one makes up for every missed opportunity so far <laughs> this year. Absolutely. I'm with you. Absolutely. The first game we did was a good game, was it not? What game was that? Oh, yeah, that was the, the Sparta Par Hills. Yeah, but that game, Hills. that game got away towards yeah, the end. Did, but this is did. coming down oh, yes. to the wire. 2 14, third down and six. A must stop here for the herd. It's Steve Smith Marsh set the direct snap, and he tries to cut it up, but cannot. It's Tim Chris pushing him out of bounds, and the clock stops. That's the most important part, Ryan. Get him out of bounds on fourth down now. 
I don't know what Wee Quake's gonna do here, but it is fourth and uh, still fourth and long here. And then uh, Mount Lake's gonna take a timeout. But real decision time here for Wee Quake with a one point lead. I think even maybe if they go for it and they don't get it, you have the confidence in your defense in this second half to get a stop on Mountain Lakes again. Mountain Lakes now out of timeouts, and Fusco looks like he does not he did not want to call that timeout whatsoever. So now faced with another opportunity to get back on offense, here is the Mountain Lakes defense, depending on what Weequag does do with this ensuing play. Like I said, even if Weequay goes for it and doesn't get it on fourth and going on tonight in Morris at Sussex football. Fourth down and five. And for the first time in a long time, we quick going into the huddle. Martin under center. They hand it off, and he is stopped! Emmanuel Asante stopped a couple yards short of the first down, and with a minute 58 to go, Mountain Lakes is gonna have a chance. Huge stop there by Mountain Lakes. Their defense has showed up in some spots here in this fourth quarter, but it's gonna come down to Tim Christ and this offense to get it done and for Mountain Lakes to advance. They're gonna have to do something. This is the time. Mountain Lakes will start this drive at the 32 and a half yard line. Field goal range for Bradford Goodbar is around the 15 yard line. So at least they have to go around 50 yards to get to that point. Chris looking to throw and he will throw it away as he was nailed as he threw the ball by Jordan Augustine. <laughs> the lights went out in here for a second. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the PA announcer got nervous. He thought the power went out. Thankfully it did not. Just a little, uh, little flicker. As after Chris threw the ball away on that play. <laughs> it is nicer when the lights are out. Makes it more dramatic. And talk about dramatics. We got dramatics right here. Second down and 10. Chris looking to throw yet again. Look out from behind. He got hit as he threw by Quinton Reed. And down the sideline, it was almost intercepted by Asim Smith-Marset. Pass intended for Ryan McLaughlin. Third down and 10 coming up. Yeah, good thing he you know, overthrew that a little bit. But good thing that was not intercepted. So now it's third down and 10, four down territory. Do you run the ball here? Actually, they have one timeout left. There was a mistake on the scoreboard. So there's one timeout left for Mountain Lakes. Do you run the ball? I mean, he has four down territory. Yeah. You really got nothing to lose here. I think you get a, hopefully you get a good run. You get a good chunk play and we'll see. They will run the ball on a jet sweep. And getting the outside, it's a first down past the 45-yard line. Well, Ryan, I thought he was out of I thought he was out of bounds way back before midfield. I thought he was out of bounds way before midfield. It looked that way, but the referee did not wow. call this so. And on the jet sweep, Justin Hernando, the first time he has gotten the ball so far tonight, and it matters huge. Wow. First down at the 44-yard line. And another sweep. It's Ben Busby. Good gain as well. Couple uh, Jimmy yards Elliott, short. Ryan. I'm sorry, that's Jimmy Elliott. You're My okay. apologies. That was actually his brother, Jack Busby's number, <laughs> who graduated a few years ago. So Jimmy Elliott with a great, great run there. Second down at six, a minute 22 and ticking. Another sweep. Hernando again, and he is swallowed up for a loss. It'll take him back to the original line of scrimmage of this set of downs. Actually a couple yards in front of that. So it is now third down and eight from the 42. 
56 seconds to go and counting. Ryan McLaughlin, the lone wide out at the bottom of the screen for Mountain Lakes. Down one, need a field goal at least. Christ looking, has time, going deep for McLaughlin, and he's got it for the touchdown! Unbelievable! Unbelievable, Ryan McLaughlin had a step. Chris puts it perfectly. Touchdown, Mountain Lakes. What a turn of events. What a way to turn on the offense. With 40 seconds to go, Mountain Lakes goes up 26 to 21. They got into Weequake territory with a sweep to Justin Hernando on his first carry of the night. And a couple plays later, a huge toss of 40 plus yards in length to Ryan McLaughlin, his second touchdown catch of the evening. And Mountain Lakes now debating whether to go for two or not here, but either way, they have the lead back. And they are 40 seconds of game time away from going back to the sectional final for the first time in seven years. And they are going to be going for two here. Chris fakes it twice, evades one tackler, jump pass to the back of the end zone. Oh my goodness! It is caught! What a toss by Chris as he was going down to the ground. The catch made by Gavin Ananian. What else can you say but holy crap. <laughs> what did we just see? Two incredible plays in a row. One to get the two point conversion that you just saw. A hope and a prayer to the back of the end zone. And of course the touchdown to put them up by five. The pass was caught by Ryan McLaughlin. What a drive for Mountain Lakes. They needed at least a field goal. They get the six plus two more, and with 40 seconds to go, all they need to do is make a stop. Mr. Do-It-All for Mountain Lakes does it. This time comes up clutch, his second touchdown catch of the day. Wow. And we, we have... We have covered our commercial obligation, so we will cover the rest of this game commercial free. You will see nothing but action from here on out in these last 40 seconds. Here we have a score update. I almost forgot we're doing score updates. 21 to nothing at the end of the third quarter. West Morris leads Old Japan, looking to go on their way to their first sectional final since 2000 and, uh, uh, 2015. This game is not over yet. Weequake has gotten very, very good breaks on kickoff so far, so Bradford Goodbar is gonna need to boot this one hard, and he does, picked up at around the 29 yard line, and he is dragged back to the 29 yard line. And uh, on the attempted return there was Ty Ede Simmons, and a great play by the, by the special teams defender as the clock now shows 30, Five seconds, Again, 35 spe seconds away. Again, special teams takes a good good opportunity there for Mountain Lakes. They've been good, blocked a punt, blocked an extra point attempt, and that's probably the biggest special teams tackle of the night for Mountain Lakes. And they're gonna call an illegal block in the back on the return on Weequake. So that'll push them back from the, what was the 26 yard line to the 22 yard line. It just went from great to really bad for Wee Quiet. That mom was banging on the door again. <laughs> I mean, she's excited. I don't blame her. Okay. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 22 yard line after the block in the back. 35 seconds to go, one timeout here for Wee Quiet. Zakir Martin. Bubble screen, has Rashawn Marshall, and he has swallowed up. Ryan McLaughlin, the huge tackle. Doing and it a all timeout is. called. Ryan McLaughlin doing it all, those two touchdown catches, that one we just saw to put Mountain Lakes up, and a big tackle there on first down. So, we quake now out of timeouts, 23 seconds to go. They are going to need a miracle to go ahead in this one and win the game. 
I'm uh, sorry, tie the game um, if they get the touchdown plus the extra point. They're not going to go for two if they get a touchdown, are they? Uh, Who listen, knows? Listen, Ryan, <laughs> we saw Carell White, the running back for Wee Quag, number two. We saw him break for a big run. I don't know if he's coming in the game right now, but they need a big explosive run here again. Hanover Park has reached the sectional final in North 1 Group 2 as an eight seed. That is unbelievable. They run through Ramsey. They blew him out last week. They run through Waldwick. Beat them 35 to 21 this week. The Hornets are going to the sectional final, and the Mountain Lakes Herd will be going to the sectional final if they make a stop on this drive here. 23 seconds ago, no timeouts for Weequake. Zakir Martin looking deep over the middle of the field, and it is batted away. Pass intended for Receive Smith Marquette, and on the coverage was Cullen Fagan. 16 seconds to go, third down and 10. Go back to that Hanover Park score real quick. George Muha must be throwing a block party right now. I can't wait for the wrap-up wrap report. You gushing over your Jefferson Falcons. Oh, I will. The Hornets. No doubt he's going to be wearing his shirt Absolutely. tonight. So third down and 10, 16 seconds to go with no timeouts. Two, three plays max here. Yes. Martin, looking deep again, over the middle, it's batted in the air and almost intercepted, and with 10 seconds to go, it is four. And Mountain Lakes could taste it more than they have all night. Last chance here for Wee Quake, an excellent effort in the second half, but Mountain Lakes, man, they turned it up when they needed to. Student section getting up, everybody. Everybody's up. Everyone in the press booth is standing. They are jumping around, and they could be jumping for joy in just 10 seconds of game time. Mountain Lakes running prevent, expecting a lateral palooza here. Martin with six seconds, throws on the run. It is caught in bounds, and the game is over. Mountain Lakes is going back to the sectional final. Miracle and Mountain Lakes, Ryan. We witnessed something great. We witnessed a great playoff game tonight. Mountain Lakes escapes. We Quakes come back, and the Lakers are going to the sectional final. What a game. They needed a stop on the defensive drive that was in their own territory, did Mountain Lakes. They got it. They needed a score on the ensuing drive. They got it to Ryan McLaughlin, and they got the two-point conversion to, to boot. All in all, a fantastic ending. Regardless of who you're rooting for, you That's have right. to give it up for both of these teams with the heart they've shown all game tonight. And Mountain Lakes will be playing host to, to Cedar Grove next week in the North 2 Group 1 sectional title, title game. The, the final of the Booten and Cedar Grove game being 35-7. So that is going to be a great game here next week. I got to take a break when I go. Play down the field. Tim Chris made the necessary throw to get it done. And what else could you say, Ryan? What a great game we had tonight. My mouth is parched. My heart is racing. So that's a good signal to, <laughs> to send this one home. We thank you all so much for watching here tonight live on More Sussex Sports. And if you don't want to miss another one of our broadcasts, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you don't miss another one. For our, for our producer, Tommy, our cameraman, Andrew, and Nick Federico, I'm Ryan Sudol saying good night, stay safe, and be careful.
And in motion there was Simmons, and this is Zakir Martin taking it himself, and he gets creamed right as he And the, uh, punt, uh, the, the puncher for Weequake is Andre Jenkins, a junior, and it's a muffed snap. Six foot five is what he stands. They give it up, and it's a first down. So this is third down and 30 here. Kevin, uh, Tim Chris open. looking to the end zone. It is caught here to put the herd up seven nothing. And he nailed it. So nice break here for Weepwick. Not sure if that was a surprise onside kick, but it's a muff. And that's a great run for a first down and out of Laughlin. But they're not going to go to him. They go to Nico Dunn, and he is into the end zone for the Mountain Lakes touchdown. Oh, a great stiff arm there by. Uh, by Rashad Marshall. I don't know how he is staying on his feet. Draw play. Look at this run right up the middle of the field. Correll White into Mountain Lakes territory. More cowbell. Zakir Martin looking to throw. He has his man. And it is. He is the deep man at the bottom of your screen. They don't go to anyone. They actually go to Rashawn Marshall. Marshall. Marshall, what a. And the kick is blocked. Oh, it's still on his feet. What a run by Gavin Ananian. Going to throw. And it is. Oh, he caught it! Christ, the give to Nico Dunn. Dunn busts through. And then trying to get to the goal line. And he is... Aaron it out, going towards McLaughlin. And he threw it in a double coverage. And it goes motion. And it's play action over the middle on a slant. He has his man for the first down. Great play there for we Martin. Going end zone. And it is tipped in the air as he overthrew Martin with four wideouts. Martin over the middle and it is go goes through the receive two wideouts here for the herd and that is a run to we quake trying to cut into this lead down 14 against Mountain Lakes and it's a draw to Marshall going right now tries to cut it up and oh my goodness what a tackle <laughs> Martin Play action, looking, and it is caught on a slant. Line. Martin throwing again, and it is caught by Smith Marquette at the 30. Great adjustment by Smith Marquette. Obviously has football in his blood. His brother currently plays for the Minnesota Vikings. Had a catch a couple weeks ago, six yards. And the handoff exchange was fumbled, and Mountain Lakes may have. It's a direct snap to his team, Smith Marquette, and he breaks through for the touchdown. They've been, they've been running that under heavy pressure. Look into the end zone, and it is caught for the two-point conversion. Fly it. It's number two, Carroll White for Weequayek, and he is in for the touchdown. Unbelievable breakaway. For Ibrahim Cisse, the freshman kicker, to put this one through to put Weequayek up for the first time in the game. Cisse is a short one. Received at the 25-yard line by Ryan McLaughlin. Second time he's returned to kick so far. Chris looking to throw again, and he finds Jimmy Elliott, and he's your center. They hand it off, and he is stopped. Emmanuel Ass Chris looking, has time, going deep for McLaughlin, and he's got it for the touchdown. Chris fakes it twice, evades one tackler, jump pass to the back of the end zone. Oh, my goodness. And he does picked up at around the 29-yard line. And he is dragged back to Zakir Martin. Bubble screen has Rashawn Marshall, and he is swallowed up. Ryan McLaughlin, the huge quick. Zakir Martin looking deep over the middle of the field, and it is batted away. Pass intended. Martin, looking deep again, over the middle, it's batted in the air and almost intercepted, and